Hi, I'm Lynn from L&J Goods in Medina, New York. Thank you for joining us for another DIY video. Today, I'm really, really excited to present a wonderful little how-to for an introduction to uh, milk paint and creating layers and textures with milk paint to make these awesome street signs. that utilizing the layers of milk paint and some other techniques will give you a really aged, crackly, wonderful textured appearance as if this were an old street sign. When you purchase your online video class, you will be getting a PDF file that will have links to all the products that we're using. You're also going to have an opportunity to purchase a kit with some of the supplies that you'll need. What's included in the kit? A really nicely paneled piece of pine for your sign board, a little bit of clear wax, a little bit of base coat paint, two different colors of milk paint samples, and some clear tough coat. This is the matte polycrylic tough coat. Now, what you can purchase separately is the type set stamp from Iron Orchid Designs. We're also going to be using IOD blank ink pad with black ink. We're going to be using the IOD thin mount right here to apply our letters. Some of the other supplies that you'll be needing are assorted paint brushes, some cups to mix your milk paint in, something to mix the milk paint with. So that could be a spoon, a fork. Um, I'm using tongue depressors today. Some room temperature water. You're going to be needing some baby wipes. I use these just for cleaning up ink as I'm using my stamps. And I think that's it. Let's get started. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to prep my sign board. Whenever you get raw wood like this, you're going to have some little rough edges. So I've taken my sanding block or a 220 sandpaper and just smoothed out any rough edges or any splinters that might be on your piece. Then I'm going to use my whole black by Fusion Mineral Paint, my black paint, to lay a base coat down on my board. This is going to create the frame all around my piece. One coat will do. I just want to make sure that I get good coverage on the edge. And remember, as we do this, we are looking to have a very aged and rustic appearance. So you know our rules. We don't worry about perfection. We just want you to be comfortable and relaxed as you do this project and know that no matter what you do, it can be fixed, number one, if you make a mistake, or you can just use it as is. I think the more rustic we are, the better this project looks. So I'm going to give this one nice coat of paint. This is black paint. I am going to paint the front and back of my signboard. Why is that? Here's a tip for you. Paint the backs of your projects because if you don't, you run into a danger of your board warping. When you seal all sides, you will prevent any warping of that wood. This will be completely weatherproof so you can use it outside with no worries as long as you seal all sides of your board. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. We've got the front and back painted with our Fusion Mineral Paint. Fusion Mineral Paint is a paint that has a high level of acrylic resin in it. That's what makes it strong and durable and has a built-in top coat. And the reason that I like to use this in conjunction with my milk paint 
is it's going to create more of an ability to encourage the texture, the chipping, the crazing that I want. I also don't want my milk paint sinking right into my board. I like this base of the fusion paint so that then I can create a little bit of resistance for that milk paint right from the get-go. So how do we use milk paint? Milk paint is one of those things it's like people are a little nervous about it and I gotta tell you I do love using milk paint. Milk paint is ages and ages old. It has that authentically aged finish that you can achieve either naturally depending on the surface that you put it on or you can also force that aged finish, which is what we're going to do today. I'm gonna to teach you how to do that. So milk paint is very easy to mix. It's pretty much one-to-one -one milk paint to water. So you're gonna get a little sample packet of a darker gray and a white. You're gonna measure out about a tablespoon of milk paint. That's enough to do one project. If you were doing multiple projects and had a larger batch of milk paint, you're gonna mix it to about a quarter cup of water. If you were mixing a half cup, you would mix it with about a half cup of water. So I have measured out about a tablespoon in here and I'm gonna measure just a tablespoon, actually just shy of a tablespoon. I don't wanna put the full tablespoon in yet of room temperature water and then I'm gonna mix it. Now, if I was mixing larger batches, very often what we do is I use an immersion blender. But the thing you wanna do with milk paint is you wanna mix it until all of those minerals and all of the different elements of that dry milk paint have been incorporated and they're dissolved completely in the water. But you're gonna mix it until it's smooth And then I'm going to put it aside because I want my milk paint to sit for about 10 minutes so that all of those dry ingredients can be absorbed into the water. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with farmhouse white. About a tablespoon, I'm gonna measure about just under a tablespoon. And I'm gonna mix it. And you'll notice if once you start using milk paint a little bit more, you wanna make sure you, you work around the sides, you wanna get into the, the edges of your cup just to make sure that all of those pigments are incorporated into the liquid. As you begin to use milk paints even more, you'll notice that because of the different minerals that are used to create the pigments, each one of them may mix a little bit differently. That's why I like to measure out just shy of my water so that um, as this sits, it's gonna thicken up just a little bit and then I can always add a little bit more water to get it to the texture that I want it. And I can see I still have some granules in here, but even then I don't mind that. I may get a little bit of striation from a stray pigment or two, and that's okay. I think it just adds to that authentically aged look. And I'm just gonna to continue to mix. After these have sat for about 10 minutes, I'm gonna come back to them and assess whether I need to add a little bit more water. We've let our milk paint sit for about 10 minutes and really I've got a very good mixture here. I honestly don't think that I'm going to need to add anything to it. How do I know that it's a good consistency? It's running off in a nice thick ribbon. We don't want clumps and we don't want it too watery. When I start to brush this milk paint on, it does have a little bit of a thinner consistency than maybe paint that you would normally use. You'll be able to tell if it's too thick, your brush is going to drag. If it's too thin, it's gonna be very sheer and it would be kind of drippy as well. So the first coat that I'm gonna put on is this gray. This is a darker gray. You can also lighten this up by mixing just a little bit of your white in with it. And then I'm going to brush my milk paint on to the surface. And you can see where there's like maybe a little bit of striation from those minerals. But as you brush it out, 
it's gonna be okay. I'm not real concerned about getting it to the very edges. And I'll tell you why, because we're gonna be distressing and aging. I want some of that black background to show through a little bit. See how I've kind of dry brushed and I've kind of missed the edge of that panel, that raised panel? And that's because I'm gonna want some of the black background to come through. I'm not looking for full coverage. I just want a nice, consistent layer. Here is how you can force this to crackle. We have that acrylic and latex base of the Fusion underneath, and then the milk paint on top. We're gonna to use a blow dryer on a higher heat, and I'm gonna blow dry this, and you're gonna see how, when we blow dry it, it's going to create all the crackling in your milk paint. So here we go. Okay, you can see See that beautiful crackling that occurred here. And the only way that this happened is because of that little bit of a slicker surface underneath with the Fusion Mineral Paint, applying the milk paint over it, and it causes the paint to kind of slide against each other. And that's what creates the shrinkage and the um, cracks and fissures to give us that really nice crackly look. When that is completely dry, I'm now going to get ready to apply my white paint. So with this layer of paint, I not only wanna get some more crackling, but I also want to encourage that very chippy, chippy look that you're seeing here on some of these. See where the milk paint has chipped away? That's what we're looking for. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this clear wax. It's a very soft, natural wax. And I'm going to apply it along the edge because that's where the most natural chipping would occur. And I want this to be kind of random as well. Um, I, I'm not looking for a perfectly even application of the wax. I might put a little bit through the center, here and there. You'll kind of get a feel for it. You don't want to overdo it because you want your letters to be able to, to stand out. But that's it. I have created my resist. And again, you can always, if you wanted to change the color of this just a little bit, if you didn't want it real stark white, you can add a few drops of your gray into that just to soften it just a little bit. And my milk paint looks great. See that? It's a nice, smooth ribbon of paint that comes off of there. I'm gonna grab a fresh brush. And here we go. You can see as I'm brushing this on, it's not dragging. So that's good, that's a very good thing. We know that our milk paint is the right consistency. And I'm gonna apply this in a nice even layer over that darker gray. So I have applied my white paint, and again, I'm going to blow dry it so that I can encourage that crackling. wonderful texture. That is so beautiful. I couldn't be more pleased with how this turned out. So now we're going to go grab a little sanding block and I'm going to show you how the milk paint resisted and how we're going to get a really cool distressed look with it. Okay, we're completely dry. Got two layers of milk paint with some wonderful crackling going on. And now I've grabbed some assorted sanding blocks and sandpaper. Milk paint is a more porous paint and it's also very fresh on here. So I do wanna be careful. I'm probably using a 220. I do have a little bit of a 
higher grit as well to do the edges, but my sandpaper is pretty worn. I don't want to scratch the surface of this. I'm going to start with the lightest one. And as I sand, you can see what's happening everywhere that I put that wax. The paint is flaking right off. At this point, I'm just using a light pressure to see what will come off. So I'm going to continue. I'm starting to apply a little bit more pressure to remove more. And I might even then come in with a higher grit worn paper just to kind of work along those edges. And that's going to remove even more. See that? You just want to take it slow. And you just want to be careful not to scratch your paint. See how that's chipping and flaking right off wherever that wax was. This is just the coolest thing about milk paint. Let's see there, as I apply a little bit more pressure, I'm starting to get more of my milk paint to flake off. And I'm beginning to see even, you know, along the edge here where I still had some of that, that black showing underneath. It's gonna be a little bit of a dusty kind of a mess at first, but we're gonna come back with a damp cloth and we're gonna clean this off. But look at that, that looks great. Got a lot of good chipping going on. And you're really going to see the contrast now when I take a damp paper towel. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly wipe over this and that'll brighten that up. It'll get rid of all of the milk paint dust. And there we go. We've got ourselves a beautiful aged board. I love how it has chipped away in all of those areas. You could even add another layer. Like I could even go with a little brighter white. I can do different gradations of that gray just by mixing my two shades of gray. It all depends on what you wanna do. Okay, once this is dry, um, I'm gonna get it ready to apply my stamps. One thing that I've noticed is when I stamp on milk paint, because it's more porous, it's a little bit of a softer paint when it's wet, my ink can kind of soak down into that milk paint. It doesn't sit on the surface of it, so it doesn't leave me as crisp an impression. I actually apply now a coat of clear polycrylic. I'm using a Miss Mustard Seed Matte Polycrylic. And I love this, like even if you are using this on furniture and you've got some chipping going on in your furniture, I would definitely use the tough coat because it's gonna control the chipping. It's going to kind of seal it in place. It's great because it doesn't have any gloss to it and it still gives you that very nice, aged, authentic, old look. I'm using it on this piece because I want to control how much my ink soaks down into that milk paint. This will dry very quickly. I'm even leaving some of that dust around the edges. See that? It kind of ages the outside of the frame a little bit too. So I've applied my tough coat. I'm gonna let this dry and then start stamping our words on our street sign. Okay, we're ready to personalize these street signs. I'm gonna use the Iron Orchid Design type set. This is a two sheet set. I'm gonna be using the thin mount with the grid lines on it. And my ink, I'm using IOD's decor ink in black and a blank ink pad. Now I have my ink pad full. I can see it's a little bit dry, so I'm going to refill it. That's what I love about using the blank ink pads is that I can refill them as I need them. I love the versatility 
of the IOD permanent ink. You can use it not only on painted surfaces, you can use it on fabric, you can use it on wood, you can use it on stoneware, just about anything you can think of. It is permanent. In order to refill my ink pad, I'm just going to take my ink and I'm going to kind of zigzag it. Make sure that it's filled nicely. And it kind of soaks down in there. All right. And I'm actually going to take a little tongue depressor and just kind of work it, make sure it's worked right into my sponge. I'm gonna be selecting my letters from the typeset stamps. I have two sets here so that I can repeat a couple of letters. If you have a repeat letter in your word and you have one set of the typeset, there is a way for you to make a space and then stamp it later. I'm gonna show you how to do that on this other board. So I'm gonna pull my letters and I'm just gonna lay them out. I like these, um, they have built-in spacing in them, so I can get them really close if I need to, or in this case, I think I might spread them out a little bit. Right now, I'm not as concerned about how it's centered. And I'm leaving just a little bit of space between mine, but you really could snug them up if you needed to. Remember, it's textured side down. Then I'm gonna take my thin mount. This is a nice, clean, thin mount. I'm gonna take a line and I'm gonna line it up right along the bottom edge. If you can see that, I'm gonna take one of the lines, I'm gonna line it up along the bottom edge so that I can get a straight edge going. And I'm gonna press it down on my letters. And that creates the tool by which we can use to stamp. If I need to, I can make some adjustments here to make sure that everything's lined up. Okay, now I've got my letters on there. If, if I had an H that came up like this, of course, I would want to adjust it. But that's what makes it really nice with these guidelines is that you can get them nice and straight up and down and you can follow a line right across the bottom so that everything is nice and even. When I'm stamping with IOD stamps, I'm not stamping onto the ink pad. I am stamping onto my stamps. I do that because I don't want any of this ink to get into the parts of the, the letter, like the background of the letter, where I don't want ink. And because they're large and because they're flexible, if you were to put them onto here, it's very easy for, for some of these blank areas to get ink on them when you don't want it. So I'm gonna stamp onto my letters. I'm gonna get a nice thick coat. And see, I still got ink in places I don't want it, but that's why I have my baby wipes. So I'm gonna get rid of this, I'm gonna clean that up. But when you use your stamps for the first time, the very first time you take them out of the package, take some sandpaper or sanding block and run over the stamps. When you take the stamps out for the very first time, you want to take a 220-ish sanding block or sandpaper, and you wanna sand over your letters before you actually start to use them. It just conditions them and helps them to receive the ink or paint medium, whatever you're using. It's another reason why I like to put a tough coat over this because if you do have a smudge somewhere, I'm gonna show you how you can clean that up if you do it in a hurry. So I'm gonna take my letters now and I'm going to be applying them and I'm gonna kind of center this up. I'm just doing it by eye, but I am lining up that line down below that I first lined up when I laid my thin mount on the letters. Once I get the stamps applied, I'm holding with one hand. I'm not shifting my letters. I wanna to commit to where they are, not shift them, and then press over each letter to make sure that I've got a complete impression. If a little bit does not come through, for example, like right here, I don't mind. It's really, really okay. Here's a little chunk that's out. You're working on an uneven surface. 
Wood is not a perfectly flat, stable surface. Very often there may be a little divot or a little dip in your board that you're just not gonna get the ink into. And then I'm gonna carefully lift this up. I say we have success. That looks beautiful. I love it. So let's say, for example, we ended up with a little smudge of ink that we didn't want in there. As long as I get to it right away, it comes right off with a baby wipe. And that's because I have that tough coat sealing my milk paint. If that tough coat wasn't on there, this would already sink right into the milk paint and I wouldn't be able to move that. I'm just gonna clean them up with my baby wipes until I can give them a proper cleaning with just a little gentle like Dawn dish detergent, something like that. Okay, we're gonna set aside our sign to dry completely. This could take several hours. We're gonna do another sign and I wanna show you what happens when you only have one type set and you need more than one of a particular letter. So we're gonna do the word Winston. Okay, so we're missing an N, but I don't have two Ns. I'm gonna skip this letter and I'm gonna move them right down to the end. I've already made a space for my N right here. And again, I'm going to line up. I'm going to line up one of my lines right along the bottom edge so I have it nice and straight. Press down with my thin mount and lift my letters. Okay. And then I've got the space where my N was, the first N. I'm going to apply my ink. I'm going to try not to get it into. Yeah. I'm going to touch up anywhere where I might have gotten some ink. Okay. And I'm going to center this. I'm going to line up my line on the bottom. I'm just going to take I, this is a little acrylic block that I have. And I'm going to ink it where I have the placeholder. And I'm going to stamp that. There, and look at that. Now, if I were not happy with the way my eye is, it really doesn't bother me because I think it has such a cool old look to it. But just for giggles, we can show you how I can just touch over this. And deepen it. I love all those little spaces in there. I just think that that just gives it so much character. And I could do the same thing with my W. I'm just gonna press it here. You could also just do this with your fingers, but there we go. If I needed to touch up, like right here, I got a little bit of a smudge. I normally would not worry about that, but you can. Just with your fingernail and um, your baby wipe, you can touch up any spots where you might have smudged that ink. So there it is. We have finished our aged milk paint, chippy, crackly street signs. I'll finish these off by putting a little hanger in the back and I'm gonna let them dry completely until that ink is completely set and then you'll be able to use them and gift them and do fun stuff with your old age street signs. Thanks so much you guys.